Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to go through my top 10 best fixed blades on Amazon all under $70. I tested every single one of these. I'm trying to give you the very best of the best in these price points. Of course, I could not check out every single knife on Amazon, but these are the ones that interest me. And uh, let's get right into it. We're gonna go from 10 all the way to my number one pick. In the number 10 spot, it was out of these three knives. First one I eliminated was this Flissa nine inch bushcraft knife in D2 steel. Fairly comfortable, it's got my card of scales and comes in at 26 bucks, but it's a little thick to my liking and it just didn't perform as good as these two. So it was out of these two. This one is the BPS Knives Bushmate, the collaboration with Dutch Bushcraft Knives. And you can see that's one of the reasons why I didn't choose this one. It's got a really nice leather sheath with a dangler, but the strap retention doesn't hold the knife in all that well. It does come with a ferro rod with a walnut handle on the end of it, but this blade didn't perform as good as this one, so it got eliminated. And that brings us to the BPS BS1 FT. Got a decent leather sheath, belt loop attachment. It is a little tight at first, but it breaks in over time. Has that mirror polished 1066 blade, just like this blade steel, except this one has the raw finish on the flats. This one's gonna hold up to the corrosion a little bit better. Not quite as good as the D2, but this one outperformed all three of these. It came with a screaming sharp edge. It's comfortable, it's lightweight. It's a little smaller than these two. It's a lot easier for me to EDC if I wanted to. I took it on several outings in the woods and I absolutely loved it for its price point at $27. It's 7.87 inches long, and overall, if you're looking for a budget bushcrafter, these three are all good options, but this is the one I would choose. It's got a nice 90 degree spine, strikes a fair rod well. So does that one, so does that one. And number nine, we have a Flissa. I really wish they would start naming their knives. This one is the 10 inch hunting knife. Comes with a somewhat decent leather sheath with a belt attachment, snap closure, Pretty tight fitment in there. Green and black paper micarta with some milling for some texture. Got a nice drop point D2 blade that performed pretty darn nicely. This would be a decent little survival knife if you were on a budget. Maybe one to keep in your vehicle or something like that because this is only gonna run you $32. The titanium coating held up nicely with the batoning and all the cutting I did with this one. So overall, not a bad option if you're looking for something in this size range. And sitting in the number eight spot, we have the Ned Foss Bore. Comes with a pretty decent leather sheath. It's got some thickness to it. It's actual leather. You can carry it vertically or horizontally. Now these things are a little thin. I don't know, they might stretch out over time. It comes with the ferro rod and the shock cord and the attachment spot there. Snap closure, G10 scales. Now they are a little thin and this one comes in at 8.66 inches long. PVD coated D2 blade that held up really well through the batoning. And this one's gonna run you $46. The only reason this one is further down on this list is because it got outperformed by a few of them and the price was a little bit more than some of the other ones that may have performed very close to it. So that's why it's on the number eight spot. Number seven, we have an EDC fix play coming from Felissa. This is their seven inch hunting knife. Comes with a very nice Kydex sheath. I'd rather it be a fold over taco style sheath but nice positive retention, no rattle. Comes with a small tech lock style system where you just press this and it has a different sliding attachments for different belt sizes. You have tan G10 on this one with some milling there. This one has a high drop point, so it's got a lot, a lot of belly and that's one of the reasons why this one's not higher on this list because, uh, you know, as a hunting knife, yeah, I think that this would be great as a hunting knife to do some small game. You know, you got that belly to do finesse cuts. Scales are pinned on. You got the titanium coated D2 blade on this one. Fits my medium sized hands nicely. I will say the way they did this, it feels a little funny. It's not terrible or anything. I didn't know like crazy hot spots or anything, but that definitely is not normal to my feeling in my hands. And this one's only gonna run you 25 bucks. So I think for that price, I think it's a good bang for the buck. Number six, we have one coming from KHU. This is model 05A. Comes with a nice fold over taco sheath, your larger tech lock style belt clip attachment. Nice little push off point, 
positive retention, no rattle, bolt-on G10 scales, drop point blade of D2 steel with this gray, I'm guessing titanium coating on it. It held up. This one has a hollow grind. It sliced fairly well. You got thicker scales, so it fills out the hand nicely. Now, if you have a large, extra large hands, the handles are probably gonna be a little bit too small for you. Now it fills out the hand nicely. It came next level sharp. This thing performed really, really well. It's 7.91 inches overall. It's got a 4.05 inch blade and you can get this for 30 bucks. At $30, the way this one performed, I was kind of shocked. It performed outstanding. But whenever I got to the more dense stuff like the corner cardboard, I did find it wedging up here. But other than that, the Apex is going to do all the work. And this one held up and it held up nicely. It's still ridiculously sharp. It is a little weighty, and as an EDC fixed blade, that's the only kind of drawback I have on the knife. But yeah, if it wasn't as weighty as it is, I, it would definitely have been higher on this list. Now these last five on this list really, really shocked and impressed me a whole lot, especially for what you're paying for these knives. And then in the number five spot, we have the Takuma Tech. This is the TKF 210 SL. Comes with a decent fold over taco kydex sheath, the large tech lock style system. It's got a little bit of rattle, and I think that's because it's thinner kydex. This knife is in D2 steel, and after I finished testing it, I left it in my garage. It was in there for several months, especially even during the hotter months and lots of humidity here in the south. And I had no problems with this one rusting at all. I did not put any corrosion inhibitor on anything just to test it. But this is a pretty wicked, more tactical style fixed blade. It has G10 scales that are contoured. It's got this wicked, wicked, nasty, I guess you could call it clip point fullers here and here. You got some jimping right here if you want to do a drag cut. It's a very versatile blade shape because you have a very low tip. If I wanted to use that tip, it's a little scalpel. And look at that tip. I even batoned this thing pretty darn hard. I wanted to see if that tip would be able to handle it. The D2 steel is supposedly Rockwell from 60 to 62, and I kind of believe it after the way it performed. Uh, it was pretty darn comfortable in hand, at least for my hands. It sliced well. It came with a ridiculously sharp edge. It held its edge very, very well. These come in at $60. And do I think it's worth $60? Yeah, I do. Now, the only reason it's at the number five spot is because of this... Attitude adjuster, a glass breaker, whatever you want to call it right here. I hate that. Pokes me every time I go to grab it. I'm not paying attention. And as soon as I finish with this video, that's getting ground off. 10 inches overall. And like I said, overall, I think a good buy at $60. Number four, we have the Omicio Neck Knife. And as you can see, this is the original one I bought. And it was on the channel already. It's a little mini Nesmic style fixed blade. And and I was impressed enough with this, especially for the price, that when I saw this one, I jumped on it. They come with this belt attachment. It's kind of like the Murmurt clips, but it's not titanium. It comes with a ball chain as well. If you want to wear it as a neck knife, you can definitely do so because it's fairly lightweight. It's pretty compact at 5.82 inches overall length. The Kydex sheath on this one is a little bit nicer. There's absolutely no rattle. This one has always had this rattle to it. I would have loved it if they would have went with the taco style sheath to make this a lot more minimal. These come in at $25 and this drop point is a lot more versatile for the things I cut, especially doing tip work like that. And if you have to pierce into something, you can. Full flat ground D2 blade. It sliced well. It held up nicely. After all the testing I did with such a small blade, right under three inches, it did really, really well. It strikes a fair rod if you would want to use it for that. Comes with peel ply G10 scales. And it's a three finger grip knife, but it's a comfortable three finger grip knife. I'm locked in. You got this deep trawl right there in the front. They have several different blade shapes now. You got this drop point, mini Nesmic style. You have a Tanto. They may even have a clip point. There's a lot of different ones now. They have a, a couple of other fixed blades that they've released. And I might check them out after enjoying this one as much as I have. If you want to just see if you like carrying a neck knife, this is a good way to start. 
At number three, we have the Flissa Hunting Knife. It's an eight and a half inch overall length knife. And this one completely had me speechless on how well this knife performed. It didn't make any sense because this is a $29 knife and my role for this knife is going to be a dedicated truck knife. I used to carry more expensive knives in my truck. I always have a more in there if I want to do some wood stuff. And this one's going to be for a heavy user. And I don't want to put any of my expensive knives in my truck because they don't ever get used. Those are just encased knives. So this is an excellent excellent option for that. The sheath is probably the, the part that I like the least on this knife. It's just a thermoplastic sheath. It's got a little slot if you want to cut a strap or something. I hate when they do that, but it comes with this little plastic belt attachment. Not the best. Mine so far is holding it in nicely, but if it does loosen up, I could always maybe put some grip tape or something in there. But like I said, this one's going to be sitting in the console of my truck. It's got nice peel ply G10 scales, nice push off point there. It's got a very useful drop point blade. The black coating held up excellently. I mean, I batoned a lot with this thing. No steel showing, D2 steel. I did a lot of cutting with this knife. You could even see the remnants from the batoning up there. It's comfortable for my hands. Nice grippy jimping there if you like that. Decent blade grind, it's not overly thick. Bolt on construction, just in case you needed to take that off to clean out underneath there. One thing that I would recommend where they put this lanyard hole and they have this cutout right here, the point right here on the G10 on both sides, I see that happen a lot. Well, depending on how I'm holding it, that point is sitting in my hand. So after this video, I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper and knock those points off. It'll take probably two seconds on both sides. I'm actually interested to see if it still has a, an edge to it. It feels like it has a great edge to it. This is after all the cutting. Look at this, phone book paper. It's got one hang up there. That's okay. It's got two small hang ups. Let's see if I can feel them. Yeah, I feel one of them. Probably could drop that out. That is insane. Number two is the largest knife on this list. Could make a good survival knife or a good hunting knife. This is coming from Comwero. This is the BD2. It has a really nice fold over taco style Kydex sheath. Large tech lock style belt attachment. Nice push off point there. Positive retention. Very minor rattle. Now this one stayed in my garage as well. Testing out the D2 on this one. The G10 has got a nice pump swell, fills out the hand nicely, bolt on construction. I love the overall look of this one. Only gonna cost you $59. I think this is a, a little bit over 10 inches overall length. I went with the drop point. There's plenty of different blade shapes, coated, non-coated, just check them out. Like I said, I'll have them linked. You have your lanyard hole back here and then you have the front lanyard. So if you wanna wrap here to here, so holding your hand in there a little bit better. I can choke up on this to do fine detail work. And the reason why this one is in the number two spot, because it performed better than all the other ones before it. It's ground actually decently thin, especially for a fixed blade this size. Look, look by my fingers right there, you can see. Now it still has some thickness to it, but I beat on this, I baton with it. I cut a bunch of stuff with it and because of that higher flat grind this thing came stupid sharp and it's still very sharp. I even cut stuff with it after the testing because it, it's been in my garage so I either grabbed this one or the Takuma Tech or whatever it's called to cut up stuff before I start testing other knives just so I'm not using them before the test and I, I'm more than impressed with this knife. I think it looks nice. Look at the balance on that. That is insane. But yeah, I'll definitely be picking up another Camuero just so I can see if they're as good as this one is. And in the number one spot, we have the Reich Hornet. Hands down, the best on this list. These come in at like $45, $46. Comes with the thermoplastic sheath. I don't love that and it's a very wide sheath, but it also has this uh, patented belt clip attachment that you just it sits away from the sheath. You can put it like that if you want. And you can either carry it horizontal, vertically, canted. And this little system allows you to do that because it has this little tab right here. And this thing locks in all these different spots. 
locks into place and it'll spin three, 360 degrees. However, it sits off the body a good bit and I, I have found that I like being that it's fairly thin. I've been dropping it in my back pocket a few times when I was in the woods. Real quick, I have this one right here, which is the Real Steel Hunter. It would have probably been number two on this list, but I didn't find them available right now. But once they do come available, I'll try to link them. It also has this thermoplastic sheath. This one's a little bit rougher than this one, but I think I paid $24 for this knife. It has G10 scales that has this nice pattern on it. So it's offers some good traction. It's a little bit smaller than the Hornet. Easy one to carry, nice little push off point, a nice stone wash finish, good jimping up there. This one has a little bit too much belly for me. It's hard to use that tip without going 90 degrees, but you could always use that belly. This would make a good hunting knife. This particular one's in 12C27, which is an excellent, excellent budget steel. It's highly corrosion resistant, and this one sliced very, very well. For 24 bucks, man, it's a no-brainer. Like I said, they're out of stock right now. They, they, they come back from time to time, so if I, if I see them back in stock, I'll definitely either let y'all know or put it, link it down below. So like I said, this was an easy choice for me. You got a full tank instruction, G10 scales that are bolt-on, and a very versatile harpoon drop point, a nice stone wash finish, and one of my favorite budget steels, 14C 28 inch steel. This knife right here came sharper than even that Comwero. It was the sharpest out of box, hands down. Now, when I first got it, I was kind of worried about this opening. Now, I would love to have the G10 closed off here and just have that opening for the balance. But that said, I did a lot of cutting with this one and it did not hinder my cutting, especially when I was when I was doing the wood shaving, bearing down into it. But where my fingers sit, they do kind of sit right there on the middle of it. So it didn't hurt or anything. It just kind of felt awkward. But it performed on another level. A nice top swedge up top. It's not the thinnest behind the edge, but it still performed really nicely. The 14C held up really, really well. It's an awesome little EDC fixed blade. This one and that Hunter, both of them easy to carry. It's not super heavy or anything. I do wish they would offer a Kydex sheath rather than the plastic ones. I'm pretty sure this is a plastic. And I really, really wish they would have a fold over sheath because this is a very wide sheath. But like I said, it does sit nice in my back pocket of my jeans. I took this one not too long ago out in the woods. It held up great. Love the blade shape. And yeah, it was just an easy one to choose as my number one because it performed better than all these other ones. Well, here's another shot, one all the way down to 10. Plus we have those other honorable mentions that will all be linked down in the description if you're interested in any of these. If you like this video, please drop a like on it so I know you're enjoying this type of stuff and I will continue to try to bring you more excellent value knives for your hard-earned money. If you have any questions about anything in particular, feel free to ask me down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer you. And I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace!